Well, obviously, you feel good anytime you get a win in the NCAA tournament. Um, it was um, uh, kind of an inconspicuous start, being down nine nothing in the first minute and a half. I actually thought we played um, uh, we played okay after that. Uh, I mean, we're up one at half, and so it's a kind of a plus ten uh, for the rest of the half. But uh, uh, I give uh, Moorhead a lot of credit. They are extremely well coached. Uh, they have very, very good players. Uh, Riley Minix, uh coming from the NAIA level, doing what he's done uh, this season is, is nothing short of spectacular. It just goes to show there's great players everywhere. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we recruited, we recruited Jordan Lathan, so um, we knew he was a good player. Um, but uh, that's a very good team, and obviously they had a great, great season. So uh, I thought we had a great spurt in the first half. Kind of get it up seven or eight. Um, I thought that um, uh, Dane's insertion in the game was obviously critical. Uh, he had 21 uh, season high, uh, and then you know the all-around game of Marcus. Um, I think somebody told me he's the 10th player in NCAA tournament history uh, to have a triple double. Um, that's a pretty special night, and um, uh, so very very solid. Luke Goody was tremendous off the bench, not just offensively making threes, but but his defense I thought was was very very good. He provided great energy, and I thought that uh, uh, Dre Gibbs Lawhorn was was spectacular in the first half uh, at both ends of the court. So uh, survive in advance. Uh, we move on, and uh, excited about the opportunity to take on a great Duquesne team. We we'll start right here on the left-hand side, gentlemen. Uh, Adam Teicher, uh, ESPN. This is for you, Brad. Uh, Shannon's played. He's been particularly productive lately, and again today in the first half. How do you explain the way he's played lately? And I'll have one quick follow-up as well. Well, one, he's there's nobody that works harder than him. Um, so success doesn't surprise me uh, when you work as hard as Terrence does. Um, you know, when he gets. Uh, uh, he gets most of those points just kind of through the flow. We don't run a lot to him. We don't run a lot of actions. We don't have to. Uh, but he gets going in transition. He's special. He, uh, you know, he gets going to the foul line. Tonight was a quiet night for him at the foul line, five of six. Uh, but uh, when he's making threes, uh, he's, he's, he's awfully good. So uh, nothing surprises me with Terrence. I think he's one of the best players in the country, and, and he's been proving that here in, in this stretch. I wanted to also get your thoughts on that play he made early in the second half. He dove for that loose ball and threw it off the Moorhead kid. You know, it's it's and these guys will tell you, I've been preaching for a month about the the 50-50 balls, diving on the floor for a loose ball. Um, and I, I tell the story, I, I, I didn't go to the Sweet 16 at Stephen F. Austin because of a di we didn't dive on the floor for a loose ball. Uh, those are the plays that, that separate you. And uh, when, you're, when you're arguably your best player uh, does that, it means, uh, it means a lot. Everybody else has got to step up to that. Got a question on the aisle, then two in the front row here. Go, please. Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald. Dane, uh, just talk about your game, especially the second half. Uh, yeah. Um, no, I try to try to come out, um, you know, do whatever I can to help the team win, you know, uh, whatever that looks like, you know, uh, whether it was me rim running or um, rebounding, you know, I just want to do whatever it takes to help the team win. Um, this is a team effort, so um, we're in it together. Tim Benz from uh, Pittsburgh Tribune Review, Tribune Lab and Duquesne Radio. Brad, this question is for you. Um, Duquesne, uh, just played a BYU team that, like you guys, is very comfortable playing and winning in the 80s. Uh, they're really good when they get to 70 first. Uh, what do you expect in terms of a contrasting style against Duquesne when you see them next? Well, I, I didn't watch hardly any of that game, and, and I, I, I do know this. I know how well, how well they're coached. Uh, I have so much respect. I've, I've done a lot of clinics over the years with Keith. I've known him back since my junior college days, and, and uh, uh, I know his teams are extremely tough. Uh, I know they're going to fight. To me, that was not an upset. That was that was that was not shocking. Uh, you, you know, the Atlantic Ten's a tremendous league, and to st I think they started zero and five, if I'm not correct. Uh, if I'm correct, uh, and then to get to this position, that that's that's on a coach. That's on a coach leading his players in the right direction. So we know we've got a tough game, and. 
Um, you know, they, they did a great, great job. It looks like numeric, uh, numerically from the three-point line and taking that away from uh, BYU. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to play well, no doubt. Right in front. It's from Marcus and Brad. What is Dane giving you in this postseason? Um, seems like the last four, six weeks he's just turned it up. Marcus, here first, please. Then Brad. Yeah, uh, Dane just he gives us a presence down low. You know, obviously with with Coleman at the five, it's a different look. So when Dane comes in, our team kind of changes, and it it makes teams adapt to what we do. Um, and then you know, like nine for nine is insane. You know, he went nine for nine. Just the efficiency efficiency is off the charts. And then even defensively, like I know he he he's been blocking shots a lot better. Just his overall presence down low is is just a hassle for teams. Well, eight rebounds, uh, the block shots, uh, we know Dane can score. Uh, Dane's always been a, a very, very capable scorer, and, and, uh, uh, but his, his presence, his physicality, uh, we're not here uh, or not winning a Big Ten championship with, without him, what he did last weekend. And uh, uh, just the simple things that he's doing, uh, they're not all post-ups. They're rim runs. They're offensive rebounds. Um, that's doing what we ask. That's being extremely coachable, and, and our team does take on a different personality. You've seen, um, you know, Coleman slide to the four and be able to guard perimeter guys a little bit. So uh, his presence in the paint has, has been very impactful. All right, we've got two questions on this side. We're going to back to Harry over here, and then possibly <laughs> you right there. Go. Um, Anderson Kimball, Takeda Home Review, um, Marcus. I know a lot of the half for offense has run through you, but at least three assists in the past three games, what's kind of allowed your playmaking to kind of go to a higher level? Well, I think it starts with just guys hitting shots. You know, you get assists when the guys hit shots. So when guys hit shots, assists kind of rack up. But other than that, I, I'm just trying to trying to play within the game, play with the, in the flow of the game, and, and take what the defense gives me. Um, I just try to, try to not force anything and, and just make the right decisions. Right hand side. Brad Teague, CS Web Sports. This question is for Brad. Brad, you've uh, talked a lot about Draven and just how hard he's worked. Can you just talk about his mindset, just the for a guy that hasn't played much this season to in the Big Ten title game, nail the big shot, and then today, two big threes and play really solid defense for you? Yeah, it's amazing what confidence does. And uh, uh, and that's two, a two way street. My confidence in him, um, I like what he does defensively as much as what he does offensively. And I, I've said it for, for a long time, I think he's a terrific shooter. Uh, both of these guys will tell you, he gives us, he gives us fits on the scouting team, and, and on, the, on the scout team in terms of preparation. Uh, he's earned the right, he's really talented. Uh, he's still learning the game, but uh, uh, I didn't have any problem putting him in today. Right hand side. Julio Alceo with KCSR. Coach, you mentioned about preaching, and Duquesne were pretty proud of themselves in terms of battling for the 50-50 ball. Are you expecting another sermon tonight in terms of preaching to the guys the importance of 50-50 balls, eliminating second-chance points against a team that yeah. showed they were capable of Ab that? Absolutely. We have a saying in our program, it's a moniker we live by everyday guys. So absolutely, I'm going to I'm going to preach those things, and uh, it, it's it's this time of year when you don't do those things that you can go home. In a in a you know their game today was a very very close game. It's a one or one or two possession game. Uh, I did see the one play I saw. It just happened to be the side out of bounds play. They stole the ball. Those things are huge, and uh, you know Keith has not been successful as a head coach um, because his teams don't do don't do those things so uh, we're gonna have to match that nasty and that grit and, and uh, so we'll start uh, we'll start preaching that uh, tomorrow when we get together again we're under three minutes to go Harry's up Marcus wanted to ask you is this the reason really you came here from southern Illinois you wanted to play in this kind of stage in these kind of games yeah it is uh, through the through the portal and in the process you know me and coach pretty much just had conversations about winning big games in March. You know, that was the number one thing that I was looking for in the school. And I trusted Coach and felt like we had the opportunity to do that here. So this is the time that, you know, all the, all the time you put in the gym pays off. Right there. Quickly uh, for Marcus, and then, and then I have one for Dane also. But Marcus, when was the last time you had a triple-double? 
high school, senior year of high school, I had a couple. Okay, and Dane, did you have any point during the season when you had to kind of get yourself over a hump just in terms of your, your outlook because, you know, you weren't playing as much as you wanted to. Did you struggle at any point? Uh, no, I actually didn't, you know. It was just for me, it was just like um, the energy I was bringing to the team, you know. Uh, we started in practice. Um, you know, I kept myself up by doing things off the court, you know, uh, with Fletch, um, just being in shape, you know, doing – workouts, extra cardio before and after practice. Um, just those little things kept me going. So. You have time for two questions. One here, one in the back. Brad, have you figured out that the slower starts digging the holes yet, or have you seen anything that's similar from these last couple games? Yeah, we're going to get a different pregame speech than what I gave today and, and uh, at Ohio State and Nebraska. So that one's 0 for 3. Uh, I failed these guys in that area. So, uh, no, we, we've got to we've you know, we've got to avoid those. We've got to avoid those. They're they're, they're smart. They understand that. But it, it's it's again, it's um, it's something that we can't uh, uh, we can't have moving forward. That's on me. That's my my job to get them uh, bouncing off the ceilings here as we go. And we did that the last regular season game at Iowa, so we know we're capable. Final question. Okay, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Marcus, uh, could could you kind of? Um, Elaborate a little bit on your feelings about getting that triple double. It's only been done now ten times in the NCAA tournament, and just to do it on this stage. Yeah, uh, I mean it's definitely a cool accomplishment, you know, to kind of have my name up there with with some of the greats, and just you know, such few people have done it so far. So it's a great accomplishment, but you know, I'm at this point in my career, I'm really past all the personal accolades, and at this point in March, it's all about winning, and that's really all I'm trying to do.